I really believe that sooner or later I will have the chance to, to do it. Uh, and when that was confirmed, um, I had mixed emotions. Obviously, I was really happy about it, but at the same time, I realized how um, uh, important the task was. I knew it was going to be a lot of work uh, from then on. It was a strong team. Without a doubt, it was one of the strongest teams we have ever had. History will tell how special the 2012 Ryder Cup uh, was. The most important thing uh, was to bring it home. And I was uh, very thoughtful about it uh, during the process of, you know, seeing David, seeing the, the trophy, uh, getting the pictures. Uh, I kept on thinking about it all the time. What if? Um, and it was, uh, it was tough. They're all individuals, uh, they have their own egos. The Ryder Cups uh, means a lot to each of them, and they know what is to come, uh, what the job in hand is. They are really um, prepared for it, and they're really ready to leave those egos away and do whatever is needed for the team. They made things very easy for me. I was very emotional. Uh, it was uh, the moment where, uh, when everything is, was going to start. At one point, uh, just before um, entering the stage, uh, I had the chance to, to look back and, and I saw uh, every member of, of the team and I, I, I look at them and, uh, you know, I thought about all those years that uh, I spent on tour with them and uh, it was very emotional, yeah, because it was, uh, it was the start of everything. Every member of that team knew how much it meant to me. Um, Sevi, the Ryder Cup how important the Ryder Cup was for me. Um, and they knew that I only had one chance at it. And it meant a lot. The first day I managed to sleep uh, decently, yeah. I woke up really early. Uh, I think it was like uh, five o'clock in the morning. I wanted to go first uh, to the clubhouse, be there uh, before everyone else. And I started thinking about, uh, you know, uh, what was to, to be done. Um, uh, talking to, you know, all the, the vice captains and, and the people that uh, were working for the team, trying to have everything well organized there before the, the players came. And it's true that uh, you know, in the locker room, it was very quiet. There was not much talking. I think everyone was uh, uh, sensing, uh, you know, the, the pressure. Every player um, has something in their minds. I mean, they, they already know who they're playing against, uh, who they're playing with. That process of thinking goes there and there is not many words said. Uh, that's, that's pretty much what, uh, how it was on, on that Friday morning. Welcome to the first day of 40 matches of the 39th Ryder Cup. First on the tee, round 
Well, I was trying to be close to the players, uh, just to encourage them, uh, to give them support, but it's up to them. Uh, it's how they play, how good they do. You just have to have faith on, on their skills and their performances. But apart from that, uh, there is not much else you can do. Just be there uh, so they can see you and just be with them. Uh, but it's true that um, it's up to them and you have to really have faith on, on them. The foursomes is, is one format that um, we've struggled um, through the years. For whatever reason. And I was really content, yeah. Two and two, I think it was a, a pretty good solid start. With the home crowds really cheering for, for the Americans. Uh, and that start, I was really happy about it, yeah. I already told the players uh, on uh, Thursday that uh, my idea was to put everyone uh, on that first day. Uh, so everyone, you know, had a, a start uh, and f feel that uh, they belong to the team and they are an important part of the team, each and every one of them. So uh, that was the idea and I stick to that. Um, and that's why, you know, everyone played on, on that Friday. It's not easy to, to, to rest Polter, to rest uh, Luke, uh, when you know that they are playing well. Uh, but that competition is a grueling competition. Uh, it's three days, you play 36 holes on Friday, 36 holes on Saturday. Um, the level of stress is much higher than any other uh, event. On Sunday you have 12 matches, uh, 12 individual matches, and at the same time you have to have those players really fresh and, and ready to go on that Sunday. It was extraordinary, yeah, without a doubt. The European team represented by Nicholas Colsarts. I mean, you don't see a Rocky come, come to play the Ryder Cup and, and perform the way he did on that golf course uh, against, uh, you know, a very strong pairing. The way everything unfold uh, down the last few holes. He made that part on 17 and look at the crowds and say, yeah, okay. It says a lot about his character. It was uh, just amazing. It was a bad moment, obviously, I didn't expect that. I thought in the afternoon, four balls, uh, we, we were going to do good. It was just the afternoon session. Uh, the, we had another two days to play, uh, a lot of points uh, on the table. And uh, that's what I told them. I mean, just, okay, we had a bad day, um, but uh, we have to step it up. We knew it was not going to be easy. 
So just try to, to be ready for tomorrow morning. I think, I think you've heard, you heard the news, I think, yeah. No, I mean, I was, I was a little hard. Uh, it was not my intention, to be honest. It just um, uh, came out like that. Uh, some players, you know, must have been a little bit shocked, but uh, uh, it was not badly intended. We were behind uh, straight away, and uh, when you are at that level, uh, once you are behind, it's very difficult to catch up and, and overtake the opponent. I don't hide anything. I try to be honest. Uh, I try to express my feelings uh, and uh, be fair at the same time. I knew we had a very strong team, and uh, I know they are capable of, you know, scoring better. No, I didn't beat myself up. I was just uh, a little uh, worried, uh, to be honest, um, because, uh, you know, I knew Saturday was going to be a, a crucial day. Um, and I didn't watch uh, much of the golf. Um, I watched a little bit, uh, but not a lot. I didn't think, uh, I didn't waste it too, too much time on, on what had happened. I was more concerned on what was to come. And um, didn't sleep well. Um, you know, thinking about, you know, what should I do um, on Saturday. Um, and that was it, pretty much. I had to wake up uh, very early again, so I <laughs> didn't have too much time to think. I was really impressed with, uh, with Ian. First on the team, representing Europe, Ian Poulter. He's, <laughs> we know how special the Ryder Cup is for him. I think he transforms himself uh, during that week. But his reaction said a lot. Okay, are you ready for it? I am. I'm not sure if we are going to see it in the future, but uh, uh, without a doubt, it was, uh, it was a very special moment. Matches are not going well. But you have a time frame where you have to put your pairings for the afternoon, and that happens before the matches in the morning are, are finished. Your frame of mind is in a different process. You are not thinking all that much about uh, what is going on, but what to do in the afternoon. For me, it, it was a very difficult uh, moment during that Ryder Cup. At that time, you're thinking, okay, uh, we are behind, we're gonna lose uh, some more points this morning. Um, my First idea of putting again everyone on that uh, day, obviously, you know, you have to throw it away. And those are the, the tough decisions that you have to make. All of a sudden you have to go to Peter Hansen or Martin Keimer and say, listen, uh, you're not gonna play. Just talk to them, look at them straight in the eyes and say, listen, I mean, I know you are an important part of this team and the time will come where you will gonna have to prove that. I think that's what you have to do as captain. You have to be honest and uh, explain why you're making those decisions uh, and that you're doing that for the benefit of the team.
you are in a very uh, lonely spot. Yeah, it's true. By the time the last match finishes in the morning session, the other guys are already teeing off on, on, the, on the afternoon session. So you don't have enough time to go back to the hotel or to the locker room and actually talk to the players. You have to really be on the golf course again and you know talk to the players that are on the golf course and say, listen, I mean, this is it. I mean, if we want to have any chance of, of having a, a, a slight hope of victory tomorrow. Uh, we need to do well this afternoon. So all those things go on uh, during play. And um, that day was a tough one, yeah. so much on the golf course. It's up to, to them to perform, to hit the good shots at the right time, uh, to keep the pressure on the opponents. And all you can do is just bite your nails and, and hope for the best, uh, have faith on them. Um, that's it, I mean, period. That's what you, what you practice for, what you work for, uh, that's what you hope for uh, during your whole life. to witness, to be part of moments like that. Those last two holes, uh, 17, 18 on that Saturday afternoon, those are, you know, the best moments, uh, you know, you can, you can imagine. Uh, as, as a player, as a captain, to see the level of the golf that was played, considering the amount of pressure that uh, the players have to go through. To see a shot that is you know, extraordinary, hit on 17, to be improved by your uh, team member.
take it on to 18, when everything is on the line. To see that guy knock that putt. To see the celebration. The way he did it. Maybe people don't realize, but he was actually facing the other way to the team. When he made that putt, and instead of celebrating a straightforward, he turned around and looked at the team, and I think that's what everything changed. I think he, he transpired what he was feeling at that moment to the rest of the team, and I think that was a, a huge moment. That moment, I think, was crucial uh, for the outcome of the Ryder Cup, without a doubt. I think everyone realized that, listen, we're four points behind, but we just, you know, give those guys a little punch in, in the face and uh, uh, we, might, we might have a chance to, to overcome this situation uh, come on Sunday. When I went into the locker on uh, Saturday uh, evening, obviously you ask the players what are their preferences. Do you want to go up front, middle, or back? I would say that uh, nine players out of 12 said I'll go in front. And that was fantastic. Really deep inside they think, okay, Let's do it. Let's go for it. It was very clear in my mind that it was the first time that Seve was not going to be present uh, physically. We all knew that blue and white was his favorite colors uh, playing on Sunday. I wanted to have Sevi's presence in, in a way. Uh, he made a phone call at Celtic Manor uh, to the team. Uh, I couldn't use that. So uh, I wanted to, to have Sevi in some um, way uh, in the team. And I thought about it, I thought about the, his logo. Because we were the away team, Davis had the chance to choose first the colors on, for Sunday. And obviously, blue is part of, uh, of uh, the United States flag. I had to talk to him. I explained my idea of paying a little tribute to Sevi. He says a lot about uh, Davis' sportsmanship. Straight away he said, that won't be a problem. I mean, you choose uh, navy uh, and white, that's okay. You know, I was on that festy area, the patting green area, uh, you know, uh, welcoming the players and, you know, uh, tapping them in the back and, come on, let's, let's go out here and, you know, play great. Jamie Spence uh, um, called me and said, uh, "Only we have a, a little problem." Uh, what do you mean, a little problem? Uh, well, uh, Rory is not in the premises. What do you mean, Rory is not in the premises? He was uh, eleven, five to eleven, something like that, and he was staying off at eleven seventeen. 
I said, well, what do you mean he's not in the premises? No, no, I mean, I don't know what happened, but um, we couldn't get hold of him. And uh, by the time we get hold of him, he was uh, still in the lobby of, of the hotel. Uh, he's in a police car driving uh, onto the golf course. So I was really worried all of a sudden, you know, what if he doesn't show up in time? And, you know, it was uh, one of those uh, hectic moments where uh, you don't understand, you, you, you are amazed, I mean, you're in disbelief, you know, I mean, how this can happen. But the next time uh, Jamie um, called me, says, well, don't you worry. Uh, he will make the tea time. He got there 11 minutes before uh, tea of time. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> he had an energy bar in the mouth, uh, a putter in one hand. Um, JP was there, uh, obviously. I was talking to JP uh, and uh, I didn't know what, what to say. I mean, JP, I mean, no, don't you worry, he said, don't you worry, he will be fine. He said, I know the guy he will be fine. Obviously, you're not going to say, what the hell are you doing? Um, I went to him and said, OK, Rory, just uh, you know, get out there and, and play well and, and try to win the point, uh, do whatever you can. Uh, and I didn't mention anything about, you know, being late or anything like that. Just uh, let him do uh, whatever uh, he felt uh, was right at, at, at that moment. And uh, yeah, it was one of those moments that phew, I don't want to go through that again. No. Those first points were crucial. I told them on Saturday evening, we have to have a good start. We have to win the first few matches. And that is a must. We have to do that if we want to have a chance of, of uh, winning this Ryder Cup. stayed within the 12th tee, 11th green. You could see also the, the 14th green. You had the 15th tee there. And it was a good spot to, you know, uh, watch the players, talk to them. Uh, and it was pretty much middle of the round. So I, I made my base more or less um, over there. I kept on uh, watching uh, all those blue colors on the on the board. Uh, you know, that's what I was looking for. The matches, uh, all of a sudden, things uh, change a bit. We had uh, a, a bit of the red uh, coming in. And it was uh, one of those moments where the balance can go either way. You have to wait and see how um, 
those things unfold within the next hour, hour and a half and to really know if you have a real chance of winning it or not. There are certain moments uh, during uh, the match, uh, as it happened on Saturday uh, evening, uh, that can change the momentum, and those two matches uh, were crucial. I asked Justin, uh, what spot do you want to be put on? Uh, he said, okay, I would like to, to play fourth, and if possible, I would like to play against uh, Phil Mickelson. I said, okay, the first part I can arrange, <laughs> but, but the second part, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. With Sergio, he wanted uh, Jim uh, because he played uh, the last Ryder Cup against him and, and, and didn't win. So uh, he had uh, that um, revenge feeling uh, inside him. And funny enough, uh, those two matches, that's, that's what happened. You know, they, they played against the players that they were looking for. And uh, those two matches were crucial. If any of those two matches had gone the, the other way, or even a tie, um, you know, it was pretty much over. It happens in, in, in all sports. When it happens, it's just amazing to witness it. How on earth uh, uh, Phil's chip doesn't go in? How on earth Justin's butt gets in? How on earth uh, Jim Fury, when he hit that putt on 16, he was 100% sure that that ball was going in. All of a sudden, at the very end, touches the lip and stays away. And then Sergio manages to win the next two holes to win the match. How many times that does that happen? I mean. I think there is a lot of respect between the players. Uh, um, it's true that nowadays uh, more European players uh, play in the, in the States. Uh, you know, uh, they know each other much better. They have a lot of respect uh, to each other. Um, and uh, it showed at, the, at those two moments. Maybe 15 years ago, it would have been a different story. And that's the beauty of, of the Ryder Cup. I think uh, there is no hard feelings. Listen, I mean, we won or we lost, whatever. But, uh, you know, there is, uh, in two years' time, we will have another chance uh, to see each other and, and battle for the, the Ryder Cup again. And um, that's the beauty of this event. was getting information uh, from Darren uh, and the boys uh, of what was going on on 18. Uh, Darren says, you know, I hit, Martin has hit it six feet past the home. And then I took my earplug out and I started uh, thinking about the whole situation. There is a, quite a, a long wait on the fairway on 18 because uh, you know both have um, longish paths to save par and they're taking their time to, to look at the break and look at the line. Yeah. 
tiger was next to me um, and uh, I kept on looking at the green uh, and there was no reaction. For a while I kept my eyes closed, uh, just waiting for the roar. I knew uh, Martin had made his putt. And the first thought straight away was, uh, you know, uh, about Seve. My reaction was, okay, we've, we've done it. Uh, we're keeping that trophy. Um, that trophy is going back uh, home with us. I saw that Tiger's reaction all of a sudden the shoulders were went a little down because he realized that you know the Ryder Cup uh, couldn't be uh, won by by the United States. So I went to Francesco and said, "Well, this, listen, this is not over yet. Uh, you still have to play this match. Uh, you're one down. See if you know. See if you can uh, get something out of it." I was trying to, to keep uh, calm. I could see the reaction of the crowds uh, around 18, about the players jumping up and down, uh, uh, celebrating. For me, it was more a sense of uh, relief. We go back to having the trophy and Davies. Uh, what I thought about it, if, what if, uh, and uh, you know, when we get that trophy back home, you know, it was a sense, a huge uh, sense of relief. achieve things and uh, that moment um, you can concentrate all that effort, all that work um, in those minutes. But not just the work, also the, the emotions that you go through all the 30 years of professional career, the relationships that you built with, with the players. And I will never forget that moment. The boys have done a, an unbelievable job. Um, I, uh, I had a few thoughts uh, for my friend Sevi, and uh, this one is for, for him. <laughs> Again, Ian, Justin was there, Lee was there, and uh, I, I couldn't say a word, I just started crying. And uh, I cried there for, I would say, four or five minutes. And uh, that's the best moment of my life, period. You always do feel sympathy because uh, sooner or later in your career you, you are in that same position. Well, we were there in 99. We've, we've been there uh, a few times. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't won every Ryder Cup that I played. I've lost a few. The whole team has lost a few. Um, and you know that uh, all of them, they're giving their best. I feel sympathy for them, a lot of respect. It 
happen on their home soil. And I know how difficult that is. The way they took it, it was extraordinary. And I have to take my hat off to every member of that team, their captain and their vice captains. So, um, as I said, my deepest respect. It is with great pleasure to present to you Captain Jose Maria Olofabo, the Ryder Cup. I've, I've done it uh, once. Uh, I've enjoyed every bit of it. I've had mm, tough times uh, doing it, uh, but that's it. All men die, but not all men live. And you made me feel alive once again this week. I am a strong believer that with the generation of players that we've had uh, in the last few years, it would be totally unfair uh, for a captain to repeat. From my experience, and I've been in a few Ryder Cups, um, I think this one uh, is very special. They come back, uh, the atmosphere, what happened on Sunday, um, service spirit. It's, it's a difficult job in the sense that um, all the responsibility relies on your shoulders. Um, and it, and you, at the same time, you have to rely on the performance of others uh, to be successful. It's not easy. Um, what did I learn? You have to trust people. And that is a difficult uh, world in the sense that uh, I knew that um, if the outcome would have been a different one, I would have been the devil. Uh, and you have to live with that. And that is tough. Regardless of, of bringing points or not, the team consists in 12 players, and those 12 players are equal to me. Those 12 players were extraordinary. What they did, they did it as a team. Do you enjoy talking about it? I think you can, uh, you can realize that. Uh, yes, uh, I get emotional about it. The Ryder Cup is very special to me. It will always be. Uh, it has given me um, very special moments in my life. Uh, I go back to 87, my first Ryder Cup with Chevy. Uh, I've been in both sides of the equation uh, as a winner, as a loser. You know, I really enjoy uh, talking about it, I get tears in my eyes, but uh, it's something that as a golf professional uh, has given me so much that I always be indebted to them, to, to the team, the rest of all those uh, seven Ryder Cups that I played on. Um, it has built relationships uh, that will last a lifetime. And you couldn't ask for anything more than that. After everything was over, um, we celebrated. Uh, everyone went back home. Uh, and a couple of weeks later, um, I got uh, the information that Martin actually was thinking of holding that putt, uh, the first putt on 18. Uh, uh, and I said, well, it cannot be true. So uh, we went to Portugal to play the tournament over there. And Martin was there. And, and I, I approached Martin. Martin, listen, I need, I need to ask you a question. Yeah, go ahead, shoot. Uh, I said, Martin. What happened on 18? Uh, why, why did you hit it 
you know, six feet past the hole. I mean, when you had two, two putts to, to win the match. Were you nervous? I said, no, no. My f frame of mind was such that I said to myself, I need to make this putt to win the Ryder Cup. <laughs> From 24 feet, with a break of, I don't know, about six feet of break, and I'm thinking, okay, Martin, listen, I mean, next time, don't you ever do that again. When you have two putts to win, just lag it <laughs> and just put it somewhere close there and, and don't do any, any silly things like that. But uh, I guess it's just a matter of being young and, and uh, uh, it's, it's just that. I think uh, with time, if he is facing a similar situation, um, I'm pretty sure that uh, the next time uh, he won't hit his six feet past. <laughs>